Hi, um, my name is Cecilia Vendrola. I'm a medical anthropologist based in the Department of Applied Health Research at UCL, and I also co-direct the Rapid Research Evaluation and Appraisal Lab. The, the aim of this short um, session is to introduce you to qualitative evaluations and um, to give you an idea of the types of questions that you might include in a qualitative evaluation, types of, of research methods, um, how you might uh, use these types of designs to, to formatively um, inform the, um, the design and, and the delivery of, of an intervention or a program and the potential challenges that you might face um, when working um, with these types of, of approaches. So before we start, um, it might be useful to just quickly go over um, a few definitions um, of evaluations. Um, I think the three here kind of encompass different layers of, of what we normally be by evaluation, focusing on um, determining the merit, worth or value of, of an intervention or a program, using systematic and, and data-based inquiries, um, and also focusing on the fact that evaluations normally have a purpose to to inform some sort of, of improvement or to inform decision making. We normally distinguish between um, summative and formative evaluations. Thinking of summative evaluations as those where um, you are aiming to sum up the overall effect of an intervention. Informative evaluations are those where you might be sharing findings throughout your evaluation to be able to help um, shape um, or form an intervention or a program. Now, in the case of qualitative evaluations, I think that the characteristics outlined by Patton are quite helpful here. Um, qualitative evaluations um, will, will use um, qualitative data, but some of the, the main features of these will include a focus on the perspectives of the participants, and these could um, include uh, implementers, users, or other related stakeholders. They will tend to reveal or clarify the internal dynamics of the, or of the program or their intervention that's being evaluated. They are usually flexible in terms of design and the use of methods um, and the techniques, and they will look at social processes as these occur in practice, and this has um, this is really important in terms of, of how we might design um, a qualitative evaluation to be able to allow us to not only capture perspectives, but also um, how, how an, an intervention or program might actually be implemented in practice. Uh, a key aspect of qualitative evaluations is also um, a focus on the social context and the idea that any intervention um, its processes of implementation and, and the effect it ultimately might have um, will be dependent on, on the social context. So contextual factors will be a key focus of, of many qualitative evaluations. And because we're, we're looking at perspectives, experiences, but also how processes um, occur in practice, qualitative evaluations will normally imply some sort of direct and personal contact with people involved in the program. Um, and these can be, again, implementers, users, or other types of, of stakeholders. Now here I've outlined um, some quite generic um, questions that you, we might use in any type of evaluation. This is just an example of, of evaluations that we've carried out in the past. Um, and you can see here there's a focus on the program theory um, underpinning the intervention. There's a look at barriers and facilitators and counter and implementation, identifying the wider contextual factors that might be shaping implementation. And then this is a mixed methods evaluation, so it's also including quantifiable impacts and costs, um, potential benefits and cost savings, and also trying to capture lessons for implementing similar programs or, or um, interventions. And what I've put in boxes are, are questions that are normally answered with a qualitative design, um, but also considering that those that are underlined, even though these might be answered with a more um, quantitative design, these can also be informed by qualitative data. Now, the first question that, that you saw in the, in the previous slide um, asked about the program theory guiding uh, an intervention or, or, or a program or a service. Um, 
program theories are normally used in qualitative um, evaluations as a way to set out a blueprint for the evaluation. So in program theories, we normally tend to work, work backwards from, from the desired change. So we focus on what the implementers um, have identified as the areas that need to be improved or why the, you see here there's an example of looking at proximal outcomes and distal outcomes, so kind of short-term and long-term outcomes. So what are the desired changes? And then we start to identify what are the activities or, or the tasks or the aspects of the program that could lead to those desired changes. Um, what is the action required for the change to happen? And then what are the underlying assumptions or the perceived mechanisms for change that the, the designers and implementers have made? And what we do is we use this as a way to set out, as I was saying before, this, this kind of blueprint. And we then carry out the evaluation um, and we do the data collection, for instance, we might do some interviews and some observations, and we might be able to see what well, have these um, have these expected outcomes been, been achieved, but also have the activities been implemented in the way in which they were set out originally and have the assumptions that implementers and designers made have these played out in practice. And some of the ways in which we look at this is we, we start considering some of the aspects of implementation. So these are just some common terms used in, in qualitative evaluation design, this idea that there might be a particular dosage of an intervention. So by dosage, we normally mean the extent to which an individual, um, a group, a particular site might be exposed to that, to that intervention or, or that program. Um, this idea of fidelity means the extent to which, when, when we look at the original program theory, the extent to which that intervention might have been delivered according to its original um, structure, its original aims. And, and, and if the, the intervention has been delivered in a different way, what are some of the aspects that have, um, what are some of the factors, sorry, that have acted as potential facilitators or barriers throughout that, that implementation? Now, many times when we are working with limited um, resources, but also when we are constrained in terms of timing, we um, are increasingly now, especially in healthcare, using what we call rapid evaluations. Um, and we've carried out a recent review looking at these. But what we're identifying is that the most common types of rapid evaluation designs currently out there include um, real-time evaluation, rapid evaluation methods, rapid feedback evaluation, and rapid cycle evaluation. And I'll come back to a few of these um, in, in a bit. Another key aspect of, of rapid evaluations is normally that they, they tend to have a formative design. And as I mentioned earlier, formative designs normally entail the sharing of findings um, throughout the evaluation. So, so these findings can shape the, the actual intervention that's being evaluated. And what many qualitative evaluations tend to do is, is they normally try to combine research methods like you see here. So they might combine a few interviews um, potentially with designers, implementers, and also users. They will um, include observations where we might be able to capture how some of the processes of implementation take place in, in practice. And there will be some documentary analysis potentially um, capturing some of the, the key documents guiding the, the intervention design, but also any other more um, local documents that have that might have um, shed some light on ways in which the intervention might have changed through time, for instance. And in formative evaluations, we would normally have um, some sort of data analysis running in parallel to data collection. And this, you see this kind of arrow here acting as, as a feedback loop where um, the evaluation team might be sharing findings at particular times throughout the evaluation when these findings could actually be used to inform decision making in relation to, to the intervention. And the review I mentioned before looks at two different types of, of, of these kind of formative um, qualitative evaluations, the rapid feedback evaluation and the rapid cycle evaluation. And here in this table, we try to identify the different stages of these. And these are quite similar stages, but they normally entail um, doing some sort of um, data collection, um, evaluate and um, analyzing preliminary data, and some, to some extent, sharing findings with 
a the project team or the the implementation team using those findings to make changes into intervention and then continuing with the with the evalu normal evaluation design. And in order for these types of formative designs to be effective, we normally have to have some sort of engagement with, with a group of stakeholders. These could be in the form of a stakeholder steering or advisory group. I've put some examples here of, of, of the composition of, of stakeholder groups that we've used in the past. But these stakeholder groups are the people who are um, actively engaged with the evaluation. They will inform the scope of the evaluation. They might help design the research questions. They'll be the people that the evaluation team shares findings with and also obtains feedback on those findings um, to be able to inform later stages of, of the evaluation. And hopefully the idea is that this group will also use the findings to make changes in, in practice. Now here I've outlined um, a, a traditional way in which we might normally share findings from a qualitative evaluation. This is just some of the sections of a traditional evaluation report. I think something to consider is also that qualitative evaluations are, are changing quite rapidly in practice. So I've mentioned some of the more rapid approaches that are being used, but also the way in which we shared findings is changing instead of a a more traditional reports. Quite a few evaluation teams are now experimenting with other ways of sharing findings such as infographics or visual summaries. Animations are used quite frequently as well or even short presentations, um, booklets, leaflets, um, these types of, of, of materials. I also wanted to flag some, some potential challenges um, that you might be facing when, when carrying out uh, qualitative evaluations and these include um, lack of agreement in scope and this is um, lack of agreement between the evaluation team and, and the designers and the implementers of an intervention or program, actual delays in the implementation of, of the intervention which means that we might not be able to carry out an evaluation at all, issues with access where we might not be able to, to collect the, the data required for the evaluation, lack of engagement from a stakeholder group, which might mean that findings are not used to inform changes in, in practice. The sharing of uncomfortable findings, which mainly um, means that the evaluation team might be sharing findings with designers and implementers that they might not have expected, so they, these might not be well received. And, and in those situations, it, it might be difficult also to, to remain um, as a critical friend um, another issue um, that we normally discuss has to do with, with this responsibility over the findings So this question here around who owns the findings and, and how are findings ultimately used by um, designers and, and implementers once the evaluation team has shared these. I hope you have found this brief overview helpful. Um, here I've tried to summarize some of the take home messages I think the important thing to consider is that qualitative evaluations can be quite useful when trying to, to look at the, the underlying assumptions guiding an intervention or a program, the processes used for implementation, and, and the potential factors that might have acted as, as barriers or facilitators in, in trying to, to implement interventions and also how the implementation of interventions might have been shaped by by the local, the local context. I think it's also important to, to remember that um, even though um, traditionally qualitative research is normally um, used in more, more long-term um, designs, there's quite a few approaches out there that have focused um, mainly on, on developing rapid evaluation methods, uh, rapid feedback loops, rapid cycles, um, where we could um, we, we can use some of these to design and implement quite rigorous pieces of, of qualitative research but within shorter time frames.